Okay, while you hear my friend grunting behind me as he attempts to do the two hours work that's required to take the thermostat out of this or replace the thermostat in this, the radiator has already been drained. We are going to try some steel seal. Quiet traffic. Steel seal in this. I actually have two bottles of this, which is what you use for a V6, which we have, or a V8. One bottle if you have a wimpy little four-cylinder. Because decks cool and some different things can interfere, you want to drain the radiator, flush the radiator, flush the whole cooling system, basically, which has already been done. I had the easy job. Hear him grunt? So we're going to put clean water in this system, as it suggests. Along with this stuff, we're going to run it for its 30 to 50 minutes, whatever it says. Then we're going to let it cool down completely overnight, start it back up tomorrow, and see what this stuff did. They claim a 90% success rate with a money back guarantee, so that's why we're documenting everything. We're going to see if this works for me, this may work for you. It's for uh, General Motors engineers, you'd like to share while we're doing this? This is for rated G audiences, right? <laughs> uh, my channel is listed as not child friendly, although I would prefer you kept language to a minimum so we don't offend anyone I do not understand the design and why it was designed in such a way probably the same reason they put metal bars with two giant bolts over top of the battery and a fuse box on top of the battery to make that really difficult to get to Chevy Venture van we have done everything we are supposed to do to prep it I have put about a gallon or so of water in it, and now it's time to add the first of two bottles of Steel Seal at $60 a bottle. Drink it up, buddy. Drink it up. Bottle number two of Steel Seal. There's bottle number one. The gurgling noises are the vehicle, not the cameraman. I say you can also put steel seal into the overflow, but I'm trying to get as much into the radiator as I possibly can. And this is all clean water, as they now recommend. No antifreeze. It'll do it. It'll take all of its medicine. All right, last little bit, we're going to hit the overflow with it. Again, you can see it's fresh water inside. And then he sold it to me because he's in his 70s. It kind of hurts him to shoot it. Yeah, it comes. And uh, he come over to my house. Flowing back through there. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, a thousand. There's, okay. no, there's no tack in there, but you can tell about like I did. So that's the fun at idle. Oh yeah, that's all right. Just that's not bad right there. Let it go there for a second. Yeah, I've seen some. <laughs> I've seen some videos where well, even up, even at idle, yeah. So, and I saw a couple like that where this crap actually worked in it, and I figured I'd use this as just a round town vehicle and haul stuff in or give it to somebody or something if this halfway works. So I thought, hell, when am I going to have another chance to try this stuff out and see if it uh, actually works? Yeah, I've heard of people using it before and sometimes it'll, it'll fix them. Well, I know some of that stuff's got, this is what they advertise. This doesn't have any fibers or anything mm -hmm. like that in it that some of that other stuff does. It just clogs clogs everything up. I don't know how this thing could idle for half an hour like this or 
you could run it down the road for 10 minutes and it not completely run out of out of water before it <laughs> heats up and does whatever it's going to try to do heat on heat on Yeah. If it wasn't ruined before, it's ruined now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We are running hot, and it is about 20 minutes into this. Not seeing it happening, folks. Not seeing it happening. We'll do our thing, let it cool down, see what happens when we start it up. After a complete cool down, we'll wait and start it up tomorrow in the daylight. Well, it is the next morning. I've just topped off the fluids. Didn't seem to lose a lot of water last night. So, I'll move the camera over to the exhaust. We'll start this thing up. Pretty significant smell coming from that exhaust. We'll let this thing get up to operating temperature and see what happens. You can see our temperature gauge climbing. It went up once, dropped back once. That tends to be a bad sign. That is about normal range where it is right now. And it looks like it's going to keep climbing. Let me turn this heater off, which is blowing nice and hot now. So we're definitely up to definitely up to temperature. When I put filled it up with water, started it this morning, my temperature gauge got flaky. I let it cool down, put just a little more water in it, just drove it a mile and a half. It is at least 90 degrees already this morning. And my temperature gauge has held steady so far. It should be burying itself. It's not doing this really constant back and forth stuff. It's going up just a tad and back a little bit. So we'll drive it a few more miles and we'll see, see what happens here. Quick look at the exhaust. This is after this mile and a half drive so far. It still smells a little funky, but I don't have that complete little constant puff cloud of white smoke that I had before. I honestly say I would not believe it would have done this so far. I can see my temperature gauge just climbed just a little bit since I've been out here filming the exhaust, but it's not just bouncing like a ping pong ball. So, let's drive a few more miles to see what happens. Sitting here at a red light, I've put five miles on this thing now. I'm in stop and go traffic, and I've run the heat, I've run the AC, and the temperature is still holding. Still blowing hot air from the vents when I turn the heat on. I would not have believed this 15 minutes ago after I started up a couple of times. 
I'm just kind of shocked, man. I'm sitting here after this five mile run, the air conditioner blowing in my face. Watching the temperature gauge hold steady and nothing pouring out the exhaust. And keep in mind, I'm running around. The sun is really beating down now. It's after 11 in the morning. It is 90, headed towards 95 degrees out. It is humid as heck. When I tested it this morning, I was looking up the number to call the junkyard to come get it. And I decided, well, let's just take it on a test drive and see what happens. <laughs> I have nothing to lose now, so I'm going to sit here for a minute. And again, I don't even have an antifreeze in this thing yet. It is just water running through here right now. I have a buddy that lives 12, 14, 15 miles away. I'm going to run it to his house. If it makes it, it makes it. If it craps out on the way, they can come tow it and put it, put it in the junkyard. So I'll update you when and if I get there. Okay, boys and girls, it is 18 miles later. I've just pulled in my buddy's house. Let me show you what's going on with the dash of this thing. And let me make these two points. One, there is nothing but water in here. And it's 95 degrees out. And two, I reset all the engine codes before I took off over here to see if it would kick that code for cylinder two misfiring. Here's what's going on. We are running. We're still blowing heat from the vents. No engine lights have come back on. The temperature gauge has held pretty steady it did not overheat at all I had this up to 55 60 miles an hour for the first 12 miles of this trip then it was about six miles of up and down hills and two-lane roads and I didn't baby this thing really at all and we are not overheating and we are not blowing anything out of the tailpipe anymore. So short analysis, there's no way I would have believed this was even possible. To get the last couple of miles from where I was before into the garage, this thing, the heat was, you know, the temperature gauge was a ping pong ball back and forth boiling over all of those issues are pretty much gone now ran here smooth ran here with power one thing i know for sure is that my oil has to be fried my oil level is fine i do not have antifreeze mixed with the oil that part luckily was never an issue so i need to change the oil let this thing cool and i'll my home is about 50 miles from here so that's going to be the real test if i get from here to the house and it runs 50 miles i figure i'm going to be okay with this this thing if it craps out along the way then i call a junkyard to come get it and i'm really not out of anything okay on the way home about 35 miles into this 50 mile trip and this thing is still holding well. I am going up pretty bit good size hill now. A little bit of a mountain. Have a couple of these to go over. So it is being strained a little bit. Not baiting it, doing you know 50, 60 miles an hour. Temper gauge is holding steady. Even though I took a chance on this stuff, I simply, <laughs> I was a non-believer, man. I would not have believed it. I did not think I would get it in my buddy's house earlier, much less make this 50 mile trek home this afternoon. So, so far so good. We'll see if we can make it the last 15 miles. Pulled into home base. I was 
on about 23 miles on this when I left my buddy's house 46 47 miles over here so he's sitting here idling my temperature is steady I did not overheat on the way over 196,000 on this particular van turn the heat on I'm blowing hot air I suffer no power loss at all that I can tell I have two mountains this last 15 miles coming over here with roughly a thousand or 1200 foot elevation changes I buzzed up those at 55 miles an hour just like I would have at any other time for a vehicle that I was getting ready to call the junkyard for this morning I have absolutely no complaints